What's going on, arcade nerds? We're going to do some Sega Vector work today. Um, as you can see, I have Zector running. Uh, this is the bare, minim bare minimum of what you need to get Zector to run. This does not include sound and so on, okay? Um, well, I want to build this for my Zector machine, okay? And um, <clears throat> as of now, I do not have the rare Zector sound card. But luckily, uh, a slightly less rare sound card exists that goes inside an Eliminator uh, arcade machine. That sound card can be hacked to play Zector sounds. No big deal. Well, I sourced one, but I have to buy the entire card cage and everything. So, what I plan to do is, I plan to, this is going to be for my machine, but I plan to fix another card cage, sell it, and with that money, buy the, buy the other card cage, which includes the card that I'm missing. Does that make sense? So, what I plan to do is, I plan to, you know, get a whole other set working. Okay, this does work, but I may sell it off and then rebuild my Zector again, uh, and so on. Does that make sense? Anyways, <clears throat> first things first, this CPU card does not work. And I plan to get that working in this video and, uh, you know, to, to, to assemble another working card cage. Now, Zector and, and all the other Sega vectors, they use a security chip, okay? And well, let me unplug this. And I did what's called the security bypass mod. Okay. What I did was I removed that socket and I put some wire wrapping wire to jump across certain traces and I burned security free ROM set so I can run this. So <clears throat> because the chip, the security chip for a Zector is pretty damn rare, and that's kind of a workaround to get it to work, if that makes sense. Okay, so, <clears throat> first things first, I need to burn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a second Zector set, <clears throat> and I'm going to sell it on Facebook or wherever, as a hey, working sector, but you need to figure out your sound card, kind of like I did. Or I can I can convert to anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to temporarily convert it to Zector just to see if the damn thing gets working or not. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this chip. I'm going to put it over here on this non-working CPU board, and I'm going to do the same security bypass modification over on this board. And then once we do all that bull crap, I still gotta fix it because it doesn't work. So, first things first, let me do let me, let me copy that EEPROM over and uh, you know let's get this thing started. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my chip. I'm going to put it in the e programmer. I already have it set for 2716s. Okay, and I'm going to move the camera. I'm going to uh, read device into buffer. That's option number three. Okay, so now that chip is read into RAM on this computer. Okay, so I'm going to put a blank chip in. and program device from the buffer. And right now we are actually programming the chip. So it's going to take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. Okay, so now that the chip is programmed, <coughs> I'm going to Pull this chip. Okay. 
and stick my new one in. Okay. So now I have to do the security bypass mod. Now you can. There are several different ways you can do it. You can actually uh, make a socket and uh, do the socket. But honestly, I'm just going to remove this existing socket and do what I did on the other board and go ahead and do the jumpers like I did on the other board. So right now, the socket's pulled. I'm just going to fill these with solder. Nothing special. Just going to do a bunch of stuff like that until all the wires are filled in. Okay, so now that, that is done, while I'm thinking of it, let's cover up that EEPROM window. And um, since we did some changes to this board, let's, uh, let's just see if it fires up. Maybe the reason it didn't work was because of the <clears throat> um, EEPROM. Who knows? It'd be, it'd be pretty cool. Okay. Come on, baby. No. So we still have a dead CPU board. That's okay. I kind of suspected that was going to happen. So how do we get to this CPU board? You know what? Before I even talk about that, let's test this RAM. Now this does have its own self-test, but it's just so much easier just to test the damn RAM. So um, let's test this RAM and see where we're at from there. This is 2114 RAM. Okay, that's a good chip. Good chip. Good chip. Isn't it nice to know what parts you have good? Good chip. Okay, so we know that all the RAM is good. I was really hoping there would be a, a bad RAM chip, to be honest because that means there's probably something wrong with this board which leads me to my next thing if 
this board goes inside this cage, how the hell are we going to diagnose anything? Well, with a card extender, that's how. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this inside the cage. And I got a camera. As always, the camera is always right in my face. There we go. So, with that card extender there, I can plug in this board and actually connect my scope and test everything while it's all in circuit. Beautiful, right? Okay. <clears throat> I, I soldered a little pin right here so I can get a, get 5 volts easily, kind of like a little test point. And I probed around the board, and one thing that I found that was kind of interesting, there's a, uh, I think it's a 245 here, and pin 2 right here is stuck low. That's, that's all kind of trouble. This should be taken away. The rest... See, see, this is a bus here. The rest is ticking away. But pin 2 is stuck low. And I know that ain't right. So, let's look it up in the schematic and see what we're, what we're looking at. Okay, this can be figured out pretty simply, to be honest. I'm thinking it's the Z80. And, okay, but let me explain why I think that. Um, okay, here's your... Here's your Z80, right? And you have your data bus, okay? This looks like a uh, data bus, you know, uh, uh, bit 8, well, it says D7. So, you know, bit, uh, bit 7 goes all the way across and goes directly to pin 2. Boom! And this is the chip that is stuck, uh, stuck down. And why do I think it's the, the processor? Well, let me explain. We tested all four of our RAM chips, because those are connected to the data bus. And I burned a new EEPROM. So, what's left? I mean, well, there is more. There can be more. But I know the rest of the boards in this cage work. So, I'm thinking... Processor gotta be there isn't much left so let me swap the processor and see what happens okay I pulled off a, a Z80A processor off of some JAMA junk board and uh, we still have a problem still stuck low I thought that was pretty straightforward. So let me shut this off in case we're shorting out the processor. I don't know. L let me look it over a little better. It's kind of uh, unusual if this would be shorted, but it's a possibility. I might, uh, yeah, what the hell. All right, I'm going to look it over a little bit, make sure that's not shorted anywhere, all, all, down, the, down, all down the line, and... Uh, if I find a short, I'll remove it. If I don't find a short, I'm going to swap this to 4.5 and let's see what happens. Okay. I didn't have the correct socket, uh, so I got two sockets and I got a razor blade and I chomped it down the middle. So it's actually two sockets there, but I know it looks ugly, but it'll work. I need to get me a 2.4.5 now. But uh, one thing I did, which is kind of interesting, is I cut the trace to pin 2. And once I did that, um, uh, bit 8 on the data bus was, was humming along. No problem. Oh, by the way, the processor that I took out that was in there was fried. Probably because this bit was stuck down the whole time. So I'm gonna, I am going to have to swap the processor. But, after I cut this trace, everything, I mean, it wasn't working, of course, 
but it, but it was moving so that's a good thing so I'm going to you know get some uh, wrapping wire and I'll fix my see this little cut I did I'm gonna fix that and uh, we'll put this together and see what happens you know I know I know I have brand new two four fives but I can't find them and I'm sick of looking around but I did find a 245 that's already socketed on one of those uh, it, 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 it's like mega touch but made by Valley Midway boards so it's junk board anyways but anyway so here's my little trace repair of the cut I did you almost can't even tell so let's put this 245 in so now we have a new Z80 245 let's see if that pin is still shorted if it if it is I'll be pissed <laughs> okay, okay. Ooh, it's doing something now. Let me turn on the scope just for giggles. Oh, yeah. We have life. Awesome. Yeah, um, just recently I noticed that this scope was starting to wiggle around and the picture's getting wiggly and I thought maybe it was the board I was working on but no I think my scope's just starting to go funny beautiful beautiful okay so now I have enough parts to build a second board I think I might have I might well yeah so I'm gonna have to build a ROM board too but okay let me unplug this so now we know that I'm going to leave that little test terminal there. It's kind of handy. So now we know we have this board working and this board working. Lovely. It's a wonderful feeling. Okay, um, I don't know. Maybe I'll cut it off. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Hopefully, this video is long enough. I mean, at, I mean, all I'm gonna do at this point now is grab an old ROM board, like grab an old ROM board like this, and then populate it. So I guess that's about it. Well, if you like watching this kind of junk, uh, please subscribe. Uh, uh, I'm on Patreon too. Um, uh, you know, I use that kind of money to do stupid stuff like this. So, you know, um, have a good one, guys.